everybody, welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com in conjunction with phillyisugly.com, which is a time lapse film that I've been shooting over the past few months. You can check it all out at phillyisugly.com. I think it's pretty cool. And I've learned a bunch of cool stuff while doing it, and I want to share with you some of that stuff that I've learned. And that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today here in After Effects. I'm not a huge After Effects user. Uh, it is a super cool application, and the more I use it, the more I love it. So powerful, so great, so awesome in so many ways. And what we're going to take a look at today is sort of cropping our video down and also adding a little bit of motion if you don't have a motorized slider or jib or something like that that you're shooting your time-lapse film on. You can still add a very little bit of motion if you do it well with Adobe After Effects. So that's what we're going to take a look at here. So I've already imported a sequence of images and I have another video tutorial on how to import uh, sequences of camera raw images. You can check that out on the phillyisugly.com uh, website. There's a whole behind the scenes page where we cover everything and hopefully explain all the information you would ever want. Anyway, we're here in After Effects. We're going to grab this sequence and drop it down here in our little comp panel and it's going to give us our 9-10 seconds of footage. This is all of those single camera raw images that you see here in Adobe Bridge. All of those images have been mashed together and have created this little clip. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll out and you can see these are massive single images. This frame is 2580 pixels wide by 1080 pixels tall. So this image is way bigger even than our frame. So we're going to scale the image down. So I'm going to do this by just hitting control minus but I want to do it faster so I'm going to hit control shift minus and I'm zooming down and then I'm going to fine tune it and bring my image uh, or my video that is down uh, to a more manageable size and I'm going to click and I'm going to drag it up maybe just a little bit like that to sort of get the video in place. Now there we go. We've cropped our video. We've adjusted it the way we want to. If, however, you want to get a more of a detailed shot, you can always zoom back in. However, you want to hit the letter S before zooming back in. And what that's going to do, it's going to bring up your scale options over here in the comp uh, panel. And the only reason I say you might want to bring that up is so you can keep track of your percentages. Uh, and that's just so you don't go beyond 100%. Because if you go behind 100%, a video that's 2,580 pixels wide, you're going to notice uh, degraded quality pretty quickly. So you want to be careful that you stick around 100% uh, and don't go higher than that. Because 100% is, you know, what the original image size is. So that's as big as you want to go. So we're going to zoom back in here. I'm actually going to fit this to my little window. And uh, I'm actually, I'm going to zoom it back out. I don't want it to be quite so close. Although that is kind of cool. We're getting a lot of really neat details. I'm going to zoom it out just a little bit. Maybe to 60%, something like that and then again kind of place it like this so we can get both fountains in the frame. There are going to be some cars driving by here. I don't know if I really want to see them but I definitely want to see the base of this statue and the fountain so I'll yeah we'll see some cars driving by that's all right and you know what I need to zoom out just a little bit more so I capture the tops of those buildings and something like that looks like maybe the composition that I want within this After Effects composition. So now comes time to sort of fake movement. So we're going to do this by tweening or animating the uh, the video clip itself and just subtly moving the video clip, whether or not we're scaling, uh, scaling the clip up to give the impression that we're zooming the camera in or sliding it side to side. We're going to do a little bit of a, a zoom and a slide. So what I'm going to do is over here with my scale options, I'm going to click on the little stopwatch. And that's going to drop a keyframe. So that's sort of like a saved point. If you're not familiar with timeline animation at all, dropping a keyframe, that's sort of like a, this image is a, uh, we can animate from this point. And we can animate from this point to another keyframe. So I'm going to go and move all the way to the end of the sequence. You can see After Effects needs to render the, the actual frames that we're shooting with, right? I'm going to back this up by hitting Command or Control in my left arrow key just to move back one frame. And you can see here's our final frame. Now with scale, I can drop another keyframe or I can really just zoom and it, After Effects is going to automatically place a keyframe. Now here's the key. You don't want sort of a, a very cheap zoom effect. And you get a cheap, junky looking zoom effect when you zoom too quickly. Cinematic 
film and cinematic photography is very slow and the, these slow, powerful, graceful zooms or pans. Nothing happens too quickly. It's very subtle and, and it gives the illusion that you're almost able to step into this space, into this 3D space because it's just this slow, powerful, extremely smooth push of the camera or pull of the camera or slide of the camera. So you don't want to go zooming way in like this. That's going to look really bad. What I'm going to do, I'm at 54%. I'm going to maybe zoom to about 57%, something like that. That's as much as I'm going to do because that zoom has to take place over the course of eight, eight or nine, maybe just over nine seconds. So I'm going to go back to the first frame now. All right, here we are. And now I want to adjust the position, so the sliding. So I'm going to hit the letter P. And you can see we switch from scale to position. And I'm going to hit the stopwatch here to drop a keyframe. Then I'm going to go to my final frame again. And I'm going to shift the position. I'm just going to slide my frame to the right. So I'm going to slide it over just using my arrow keys. I'm just going to nudge it, you know, eight or nine ticks. Again, very, very subtle. A very subtle zoom, a very subtle slide. You don't want to do anything too quickly. That just looks like, you know, a very cheap, um, over overdone ad for a, a low local TV network. It's not really good stuff. If you want it to look powerful and cinematic, slow and smooth and powerful and graceful is the name of the game. So that's what we've done. Our final frame looks like that and our first frame looks like that. So it's just a very subtle slide and zoom and that is how you fake motion and you take care of cropping your video in After Effects. Again, when it comes to faking the motion, I can't emphasize this enough. The only way you're going to give the impression that you're moving the camera through space, th in through 3D space, is if you move very, very slowly. So it has to be just move a very, very little bit and it's a very subconscious thing, but people notice it and you feel it and it makes your video start to look much more three-dimensional. So that's it for this one. I hope you guys have learned a thing or two. I hope you've picked up a thing or two. Thanks for sticking around and watching this video. Make sure you go check out the site. That's www.tutvid.com. And also while you're at it, phillyisugly.com is sitting right there and you can check that out as well. I'd really appreciate it if you checked out the video or the film and shared it with your friends and everybody you know. That'd be super cool. So that's it for this one. I'll catch you guys later.